Hey, what is up? My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at the cinematography behind the new movie Sicario, Day of the Soldado. If you are not aware, Sicario was an amazing film uh, that came out in 2015, directed by Tony Villeneuve and photographed by Roger Deakin. Despite the budget being 30 something million, did surprisingly well, though it wasn't exactly a breakout. I think it made 80 something million worldwide. But the producers decided that they wanted another shot at this and maybe with the potential of making this into a franchise. So they commissioned the Taylor Sheridan, and the screenwriter to write another script. He came back with uh, this movie, which kind of jettisons moral quandaries and the uh, lead actors and really bases it around the villain and the anti-hero from the first film, Josh Brolin and, and Benicio Del Toro's characters with, let's say, limited success. But the photography uh, shot by Darius Wolski, the same guy who actually um, shot All the Money in the World, the last film I broke down, um, is really beautiful. The last time I did one of these, it was like 50 minutes long. So I'm going to keep it short today. Just pull out a couple of stills from the trailers and the EPK. And hopefully this will become a format where I can talk about films that I've seen um, and the cinematography that I learned something from and everyone can get something from it. So without further ado, this is the cinematography breakdown for Sicario, Day of the Soldado. So let's jump straight in, shall we? Uh, here's a couple of BTS shots. Um, the Alexa XL. Uh, he has his little eyepiece on, but and he's got this on some kind of um, cine saddle slider here. Uh, he has his eyepiece on, but because he's going to slide this back and forth to get more of a dynamic shot, he's operating from this little um, small HD thing. So I actually wanted to start with um, the daytime exteriors, because uh, there are a lot of these, and I think they handle them really well. Here we have, here we have Alex XL with their you know, Master Primes um, on a steady cam, And if you see this guy, it's actually a, a diffusion frame, not to give negative fill to the actor, but to hold, and they've got two of them here, hold next to the camera so that in the camera's shot, which is Josh Brolin here, we don't get an outline on the ground of a guy holding a camera. It's really just... Um, acting as a sun swatter to diffuse the shadow, uh, even though there's, you know, you're not going to see it in this shot because a lot of dust, but it's pretty crazy to see how we have our op, we have someone spotting him, we have this person running backwards, um, holding these double two frames. I can't tell what this person is doing, and this is the um, sound recordist, but they're all wearing ear protection because Josh Brolin is firing his rifle. Uh, he probably has earplugs in. They took a scene that looked like this, so they picked really good overcast days, and then they turned it into a scene like this, where the sky, if we go back to here, they turned the sky to that color. So they gave everything a nice blue tint, pushed everything down, they made it feel uh, much more menacing and threatening. They might have replaced these skies over here, but for these exterior scenes, um, they picked good times of day or good times of year to shoot where they wouldn't have sharp shadows. Um, you actually see that there is a little bit of diffuse shadow over here. Um, so they, you know, they picked good times where they would have much more control and they were able to make that into that. Which is interesting because you see later on in a different, um, a different scene, there is much sharper shadows here. This is later on the, in the, um, in the film, it's still later in the day because the shadows are so long, but they, w they went with a totally different grade. You know, this is where things are still murky. And then this is where, you know, it's the, towards the end of the film, there's lots more resolution. Um, they went with more of a, almost like Fast and Furious look, whereas this is a much more muted uh, palette and a much more, you know, a much more somber muted look. Oh, this was just a cool little um, trick that I thought they did. They have lots of helicopter to helicopter aerials so we're in a helicopter looking down on another helicopter shot um, but it would have been they have a whole bunch of scenes that take place on the ground and it would have been really expensive because you know helicopters are thousand dollars an hour to rent at least just for the pilot and the helicopter to say nothing of the camera so they did a really good job of blending these helicopter shots with these shots which i'm pretty sure are you know, there's a crane over here with a light on top. 
that there's a there's a guy operating it who's like swinging it around to make it feel like a helicopter so they have much more control maybe they just let um the bounce fill him in from where the helicopter light is hitting the the ground but i thought it was cool how they mixed up um mixed up practical helicopter shots pretty seamlessly in the edit with this um this kind of faux helicopter on a crane they also do a good job of and you'll see this in the final scene we're going to look at you know rather than leaving this horizon dark kind of populating it with lots of cool action of people swinging flashlights around and car car lights this is the conversation um between josh brolin and alejandro so this is our wide. You can see the whole scene is shot pretty much with one light that they've taped, one practical skirts of, of paper on to give it some color or something. And we the whole scene you know play, cuts to and forth between this and this, and there's the other single. So you know I can tell you that there is a much larger source over here. Um, you know probably a you know light mat two L or something like that. Maybe a China, big China ball. It looks circular in his eyes, so maybe a China ball. They've even left the lamp in his shot to kind of motivate the light. But you can see how this is a much larger source over here. Um, but, you know, it certainly didn't pull me out of the scene. I did think this side was a little bit dark, but that's uh, Darius Wolski's uh, style. So the next thing we're going to look at is how production design and the industrialness of some of these sets really lends itself to to great cinematography you have all these in the the air force base where they're staging their raids out of um not only do they have these really cool uh square kind of quasar tube banks or kino flow banks they don't really use to light much directly they use them as background um, and then they have these awesome cages so when they're when they're thrown out of focus in his close-up you get this really wonderful texture as well as you know all these area lights so he's in a brightly lit place but he's stepped out of the bright into the darkness and we just get this cool um, split lighting on his face the same is true of uh, this is the opening mission in Somalia and I've shot in shipping containers before they all have this awesome uh, striped texture uh, this is probably a set though so we have our hooded man our, our kidnapped pirate and then they've done this cool, this interesting thing where they've mixed daylight and red light. They've got two separate light sources, and then they've also wet the floor so that we see all this reflection. Um, it made for a really cool scene because you get all this great um, color contrast between the red light and the white light. Cool effects in this um, in this film. I think where it really shone for me was when they shoot these really, when they mix color temperatures and shoot these really beautiful evocative scenes uh, right at sunset or, or at sunrise. This is a really powerful scene where Alejandro is uh, kind of revealing to the girl that he's kidnapped that it was her father that killed his family. And, you know, you can't you can't fake this. Well, I guess you could green screen it, but they didn't hear. Um, they probably just sat around and waited for blue hour. They waited for the sky to be just right to get his thing. So we have the light in the sky. We have an off screen illumination that's that's keying Alejandro here. Then in the background, we have we have his key. Then we have this super green background. And then just for fun, we have a golden light in the um, in the kitchen here. So you get all these this wonderful color contrast um, across the whole across the whole scene. It makes it really really pop it makes it really evocative here's another version i think this is probably sunset as well this is the opening raid on the um on the somali pirates um, which a lot of it is actually seen uh, kind of a throwback to the first film a lot of it's seen in uh, night vision but we have you know again this they just chose to shoot at that in that 15 minutes where the sky is almost perfect and they obviously have a really big, well, not that big because, you know, the shadows are quite sharp. They probably have a, um, the shadows are very parallel. So they probably have a, a 10K or a 20K, you know, way, way over here, giving it that nice, uh, that nice fill to like really ping these blacks and give, give a nice deep look. This is the last thing I wanted to talk about. It's where the, the finale happens, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, and they have this kind of natural amphitheater where it's, you know, it's a it's a bowl, um, and they bring him here to to kill him. So they have this. Uh, this is sort of you know thirty feet above uh, where they are, and they're able to use that to um, 
they motivate it with these truck lights, but I think then they bring it, they brought in film lighting so that everything's kind of focused on this, um, this circle where things are going to happen. And the main, they keep the practicals of these, uh, of this main truck here with the, you know, the multiple headlights and the, t and the roof lights. And you can see how they're using this car to shoot over and pick up these boys, which are going to be instrumental in the scene. And they're using these lights to hit over and hit this guy. Um, and then these lights and these lights here just to give us um, lights in the frame. You know, when we actually see stuff, they do a really good job of keeping everything, you know, keeping this really black and having almost no detail um, front to camera. And then, you know, using all this stuff. I mean, this guy's face is lit by another light somewhere, um, but it's really just the edge on this guy that really makes it feel awesome. I want to do one of these a week if I can, because it really helps my um, helps my cinematography development by looking at these films and makes me go and watch other movies. Thanks very much for watching, guys. That was my breakdown of Sicario 2's cinematography. Let me know if there's other films that you'd like to see me break down, either things that are coming out on DVD or things that are still in the cinema. Um, I really enjoyed doing this and got a lot from it. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you.